Hello to all my viewers. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta, and today we'll understand how to detect autocorrelation in residuals in R. Autocorrelation in time series analysis refers to the correlation between a time series and a lagged version of itself. In simpler terms, it measures how a variable is correlated with its own past value. Autocorrelation is a crucial concept in understanding the temporal dependencies and patterns present in time series data. Mathematically, the autocorrelation function ACF at leg k for a time series xt is defined as a correlation between xt and xt minus k. The formula for autocorrelation at leg k is given by ACF of k is covariance of xt, xt minus k divided by square root of variance of xt into variance of xt minus k. The ACF provides insights into the temporal patterns and dependencies within a time series. A positive autocorrelation at lag k indicates a similarity between the current observation and the 1k time units ago, while a negative autocorrelation suggests an inverse relationship. A zero autocorrelation means no linear relationship between the current observation and the one at lag k. Autocorrelation is often visualized using a correlogram, which is the plot of autocorrelation function against the lag. Analyzing the autocorrelation helps in understanding the seasonality, trends, and other patterns present in time series data, which is crucial for forecasting and modeling. Example, if there is a high positive autocorrelation, it means that if today's weather is hot, there is a good chance that tomorrow also it will be hot. If there is a high negative autocorrelation, it means that if today's weather is hot, there is a good chance that tomorrow will be cooler. If there is low or no autocorrelation, it suggests that Today's temperature does not give you much information about what tomorrow temperature will be. In the presence of autocorrelation, the OLS estimators remain unbiased, consistent, and asymptotically normally distributed. They are no longer efficient. As a consequence, the usual T, F, and chi-square cannot be applied. Usual T and F tests are not valid and will tend to be higher, indicating the higher significance of our estimates than the correct, than the correct one. The OLS estimators will be inefficient and therefore no longer blue. The estimated variances of the regression coefficient will be biased and inconsistent and therefore hypothesis is no longer valid. Underestimate. Underestimates vari variances of the error term is likely to overestimate the true variance. In most of the cases, R square will be overestimated indicating a better fit than the one that truly existed. Now let's see how we can do this in R. For this, we'll go in R. So the first thing uh, which we have to do is we have to import the data set. So go in environment, import the data set from Excel. The name of the data set is ERDL, open. Now press import. This data set consists of GDP, export and consumption. GDP is our dependent variable, export and consumption are independent variable. Whenever we want to run any analysis in R, we will create scripts. This can be done from here, R script. I already done one. First command is attach ERDL. ERDL is the name of the data set, run. You can run any command with the help of run tab or control enter. Activate the library LM test so that we can run the Durbin Watson test. Now we will run the model. Model is linear model GDP tilde export plus consumption run. So we got the model. Now let's have the summary of this model. So write it down summary of model. Enter. So the p value of export and consumption is not significant as it is more than 0 0.05. So export and consumption does not affect GDP. Now let's uh, uh, test the residual of this model. How we can do it? With the help of autocorrelation function and partial autocorrelation function, I will request all my viewers to kindly refer my previous video to understand the concept of autocorrelation function and partial autocorrelation function. So ACF model, the atomic operator, residuals, run, maximize it. So you can see that there are some spikes 
which are significant or in other words which are outside this blue dotted line and therefore we can say that the residuals are autocorrelated let's check with the PACF also uh, same is the scenario here also there are some spikes which are outside this blue dot blue dotted line and therefore the residuals are autocorrelated so these are all informal methods let's go for the formal method that is a Durbin Watson the null hypothesis is residuals are not autocorrelated. Alternative residuals are positively or serially correlated. Durbin Watson test of the model run. See the p value 5.095 e raised to minus 6 means it is less than 0 0.05. So, what is our interpretation? As the p value is less than 0 0.05, so we reject null hypothesis, which means that residuals are autocorrelated. Now, we are also having one test which is one Newman test. It's used when we are having more than one lag or rather we want to do the testing of more than one lag. We'll have to install the package, environment stats, tools, install packages, write down E and V stats and press install. Once this is done, activate its library, library, E and V stats run test for the serial correlation run and see the p-value so 2.984 e raised to minus 8 what is our interpretation as the p-value is less than 0 0.05 so we reject null hypothesis which means that more than one uh, lags are auto correlated so this is how uh, you can check Autocorrelation of residuals in R. For more videos on econometrics using R, kindly subscribe to my channel. You can also refer my playlist in which I uploaded videos on data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. Please don't forget to like and share my videos. You can also join me on different social medias. Link given in the description box.